Hi, Ben here from Clare.io. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up a model for rendering. Um, and this is what we're going to end up with today. So this is a Gundam model, uh, and I've actually found it from here. So I went to Creative Clash, and I found the this Gundam model. It's a free model from them. Uh, and I went and downloaded it. So once you've downloaded your model and you have it on your um, hard drive, create a new scene. So here I've got an empty scene, and then just grab your 3D model, and in this case also the MTL, and just drag them into the scene. It'll automatically start um, importing. It'll first upload the files, and then it's going to import them. And we'll see that that happens relatively quickly. Okay, so um, we have a loading indicator here. It means that, that we still have content streaming from the server, but it should be done momentarily. There we go. Okay, so um, this scene, though, um, doesn't quite look right because it, we have this um, large, uh, I guess, background that uh, the modeler has created to make good renders. Let's first um, disable this. We're just going to find, we're going to click on it here, and it's going to highlight here in our Explorer. We're going to click the visibility icon, and then it's going to go away. Now I'm going to uh, use the F key now on the remaining. Um, let's see, let's click on the object and then hit the F key and that's going to center it in each of the viewports. I clicked on a um, element in the object so that I could do that. Um, okay, now if there's also some other things in this model that I don't need. Um, I don't know what these planes are doing here. It's probably for when he originally modeled it. He had these uh, planes with a um, uh, blueprints on them. So we're just going to hit delete. We're going to select each one of these and delete them one after another. Okay, and let's see what we got now. That looks pretty good. Okay, so um, the other thing that I'm finding wrong with this model uh, on import is these things, there's a number of meshes that aren't smooth. Uh, specifically the helmet, uh, some of these uh, should be cylinders um, for his weapon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to Tools. I'm going to have the object selected. I'm going to find the um, normal tool here called Auto Smooth. And if I just click that, you can now see that it's become smooth. I might have to adjust the parameter slightly because I can still see a few seams here, so let's try and move that up a little bit. Uh, that actually worked. There, now it's smooth. And you can see the normals are correct. Let's try this on the helmet as well. I select the helmet, I come over here and I click Auto Smooth. That is using the normal modifier in the mode Auto Smooth, and then you can just set the normals to be the right level for what we want. And sometimes it's a bit tricky because you don't want to... Uh, auto Smooth basically will average the faces um, together that uh, have uh, less than this angle between them. Um, and getting that angle right for different objects can sometimes be a bit tricky. But somewhere around here seems about right. That looks good. Uh, there's some cylinders here on his arms that uh, are not smooth, so I'm just going to select them, click Auto Smooth, and that fixed them right up. Let me just select here, click Auto Smooth. There we go. Um, and I think there is, ah, yeah, down here on the sides of his legs, these could also use some smoothing. So I'll just auto-smooth these all up. The next thing we want to do is we want to um, set up some lighting for this scene. Um, the easiest way to do that uh, and have a really nice output is uh, an area light. The one um, issue with area lights, though, is that they don't work in the viewport. They only work in the render. So I created the area light. Um, right now it's uh, pointing sort of... Um, forward, we're going to point that down, uh, roughly down. I might have it point a bit towards him, so I'm pointing it back a little bit. I, and I was using um, the E key to go into the rotation mode. I'm now going to hit the W key, and now I'm in the translation mode. And I'm just going to pull that up here. I'm doing this a bit by eye, um, but it's roughly right. Okay, so that's now we got some lighting. Now we want to set up a camera. Uh, and what usually I do is I, I usually take one of my perspective viewports. So this one's perspective. And I can rotate around the um, current selection by holding down the Alt key and the right mouse button. Um, I position myself that way. Um, and wh then what I do is I create a camera from this viewport. So I click on the plus key here, and I go Create View Camera. And then I switch to that view camera. So there we go. So now this is actually um, using this camera here. And when I rotate around, it will actually adjust that camera in the 3D scene. And this is important because for a render to work, we have to have a camera that it's using. It just can't use the viewport at this time. So now that I've got um, the light set up and the camera, I can render the scene. I'm just going to click here. I'm going to go to Live Render. I'm going to go to Fast Preview. 
what it's going to do is it's going to start up a render uh, machine on the cloud and it's going to stream those results in. Usually happens pretty quick. There we go. Um, immediately obvious is that um, our scene is way too dark. So let's select our light. And one of the problems with this light is uh, this scene is quite large. Um, and our light is only uh, have a, a area of one by one. So the first thing we can do is we can make our light larger. Let's make it, let's guess, but let's go 50 by 50. Um, that's actually more reasonable. We can see that it's roughly now about half his height. You can see it here in this viewport or here. Um, but it's still not bright enough. So I guess the next thing we can do is increase its intensity. Let's make it 10 times brighter. There we go. Now we're starting to light the character. Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, 17. That's starting to get pretty bright. And let's position this down a little bit. And then we'll press E key, go back to rotation mode. Whoops, wrong rotation. There we go. That's not bad. Okay, um, normally now I'd make a background. Uh, what's uh, And usually I do that making a plane and then sort of uh, um, editing the vertices of that plane to put it behind the object. So let's do that. So I'll create a plane. Create a plane at the center. So we're going to move that plane down. And then we're going to make it bigger. Remember, this is a very large scene. So something like at least 400. Well, actually, let's go with um, 1,000 by 1,000 is probably somewhat OK. We're going to make the segments 4 by 4. The reason why I'm going to do this is this is going to give me a lot of vertices that I can start manipulating to make a correct background. So I'm going to take that object, and I'm going to go into vertex mode. When I'm in vertex mode, I can then select a bunch of vertices and move them around. So I'm going to move this back here. We're going to raise it up. So now I've got a background. And you notice that there's still some black here. So I'm going to select a few vertices on that side. I'm going to raise those up as well to the same height as the other ones. And that's going to clean up. Ah, I moved the wrong vertices. Let's, it was these two here. There we go. OK. And that just gave us uh, a nice uh, background there. The only problem with this background is that you can actually see the um, mesh here. So we can get rid of that by using mesh smoothing. And the way you do that is you just hit the plus key while you have that object selected. I am hit plus twice, it smooths out that object. We can actually see what we're doing um, uh, by going to the same perspective camera. And now here's our, our WebGL viewport and here's our render viewport. The one other problem with this background, um, besides being a bit chunky before before I mesh smooths it, was that our background um, is yellow. Let's add a V-Ray material on that. And let's make that um, sort of a mid uh, sort of white background here. That's not too bad. It's not the most uh, effective background, but it's not horrible. And we'll just make the background actually touch his feet. We can figure out that by um, zooming in here a lot. And there we go. So that's touching his feet. Um, and once you think you've got a really good render, you can just go to full screen and do a production render. And then we'd have the final render done. Now, of course, if uh, you can do a lot more to your object to make it look even better. You can start replacing the materials on the original object or adjusting their parameters. Um, there's a lot of uh, beautiful V-Ray materials available in Clairio, uh, but we just stuck with the default, I guess, uh, colored diffuse models that uh, are materials that import with those objects. But there we go. We've rendered the object in Clairio um, with nice soft shadows, area light, um, and a nice background. I'd love to see what you can do with Clairio. Thank you.